What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're gonna be working on putting the roof rack on the micro camper. All right, so I actually designed a roof rack for the camper and to attach it, I got these Rhino Rack RTV track kit. So basically these will rivet to the roof itself. In the kit, they give you some butyl squares. So this is how we're gonna keep water out. They give you the rivets and some end caps and some instructions on how to attach it. And then you have to have your own rivet gun. So here is the metal. I got this actually, I designed it in an app called Shaper 3D on my iPad. And then I sent the files over to a company called Laser Dynamics in North Carolina cut it out for me and then shipped it to me. So we got six feet, nice and strong. This is all aluminum, so none of it's gonna be able to rust. These are quarter inch, or no, these are three sixteenths, and then this is eight. This is a front fairing. If you guys are familiar with like a Prinzu rack for a Tacoma or anything like that, this is the same style this is gonna be. So basically you're gonna have the sidebars, and then I got some 80-20 extruded aluminum, just like I built stuff with before. That's what's gonna connect this stuff. And then these are gonna go from those tracks to the 80-20 extruded aluminum. And then in the middle, so basically they could not cut me anything this long. So I had to split it in the middle. That way their machines could handle what I was doing. And so they got this stuff. This is from tnuts.com. Basically these plates, once these are put together, they'll be able to bolt these together. And this will be on the back side. You won't be able to see it. So, and then I'll paint those black as with the rest of these. These are the rails and it's just like your typical C channel, kind of like in the bed of a Tacoma. So basically for placement, I'm just went ahead and measured eight inches back and then just did a ruler width away from my edging here. And that made it super easy for me to be consistent on both sides. Now that I got it sitting where I want, I went ahead and taken a Sharpie and marked all the holes uh, where we're gonna drill. Here I just picked out a drill bit that was as close to the same size to the rivet as possible and went ahead and drilled my holes. With all of our holes drilled up and down here, uh, just drilling right through the rail itself, then we're gonna take these little beetle squares, peel off the little bit uh, paper, and then stick them right over top of this, and that's what's gonna act as our sealant for the rivets, so we're not gonna get any leaks when these tracks are all attached. These little beetle squares are pretty much just like stickers. Go ahead and stick them down to where you want them, and then I kinda took my knife to peel off that top layer, and then after that, we can set our rail directly on top of those and start to rivet them down. Alrighty, we got all of our rivets in. And now we just need to repeat on the other side. Uh, I think I am gonna take a little bit of Sika Flex like I did earlier in the build for the other part of the trim and just dab a little bit around this rivet just as some extra protection against water intrusion. So now we'll just go ahead and do the other side. Uh, then it'll be time to attach the rack. So basically just rinse and repeat like we did for the other side. And like I mentioned before, I did end up using some longer rivets. The rivets that I actually used in this part of the video were too short and I had to go back and drill them out and put some longer ones in there because they weren't quite grabbing uh, like I wanted them to. With the roof rails all mounted, all that was left was to paint and assemble the rack. Went in the garage, went ahead and sanded it all down with some 220 grit in preparation to lay down some steel it. I've used steel it coatings quite a bit in the past. I actually painted an entire trailer build uh, with steel it alone. Uh, this stuff's really durable if you prepare the surface correctly and apply it correctly. I did, I think, two coats total on this roof rack. Let it dry about a day in between coats. Alrighty guys, with everything all painted, what we're gonna work on doing next is connecting these two front and rear panels. We got these plates that I got from T-Nuts and I went to Tractor Supply and got some zinc hardware. And you can buy, at least at my Tractor Supply, you can get a whole bag of this stuff and they charge you by the weight, not by the bolt. So you can save a lot of money at a Tractor Supply by getting all your hardware there. We'll get these uh, two joined and then we'll start working on adding some crossbars. This part is fairly straightforward, just utilizing that plate and joining our two pieces together with some washers, a lock washer, a nut, and our bolt. And just try to avoid what I did, and I assembled two left sides <laughs> at the same time, and I had to go back and undo one and flip it to a right side. All right, we got our front and rear pieces joined. I really wanted to find some black hardware that wasn't the black oxide stuff that I ended up rusting, and I couldn't find anything. So that being said, if you guys know where to get black hardware, I would love to know. Uh, painted black, not black black oxide or whatever that rusts, actual true black hardware. Drop that in the comments or send me a message. But for now, we're gonna use the zinc. The zinc and black theme will match the trailer anyways. From this point on, we're gonna start doing some crossbars. We're doing four crossbars and then one in the front for the fairing. I ordered a total of five crossbars from tnuts.com. I figured one for the front fairing and then four that I could spread evenly throughout the rest of the rack. You can of course add as many as you'd like, but I figured four was pretty sufficient. All right guys, I got the rack completely assembled and painted. Uh, it's upside down right now because I just want to show you how these rack feet mount. So basically I'm just taking these little bolts I got them from Tractor Supply and then some T-slot nuts 
from tnuts.com and that's the same place that I got these other side plates from. Quarter 20 thread, uh, you just slide the T-nuts in there and thread them in and it costs they're loose right now because we gotta adjust them. And then to attach the rack feet to the rails that we already installed, I got these track nuts uh, from e-trailer. I will link them in the description and then some bolts that thread right into these. Uh, I believe they're either quarter 20 or six by one, two, five, one of the two. I'll uh, kind of put that in the description of the video right here. All right, so next we're gonna go ahead and get this thing flipped over. I'm gonna get it on top of the camper, get my feet all aligned uh, and start bolting it down. Nice thing about an all aluminum rack is how lightweight it ends up being in the end. It did end up being a little bit tricky to fish those Yakima track nuts in there. I think I used like a screwdriver or something like that to kind of space up one side because they wanted to sit in there crooked. Uh, but in the end, it wasn't too hard and rather easy install. All right, guys, so this is the rack all mounted up. Sorry, it's a little windy out here. If you hear any of that wind noise, three feet worked out pretty good. Uh, both sides are lined up pretty much with the edge of this. So that worked out pretty good. Our max air fan can open and close nice and freely and not hit any bars. And then I also made the rack tall enough. That way, anything I put on top of here, I'm not going to have to worry about hitting the top of that uh, while it's closed if I'm transporting a canoe or anything of that nature. Some of the things I'm going to do, I'm going to put my 270 degree awning on here. Uh, the brackets that the OBS awnings come with have that little raise up here that gets me by this lip and keeps the awning nice and tight to the camper. And I think I'm also going to end up adding uh, one of those like shower cube things on the other side. And then I'm also going to add some lights. I'm not going to do any of that in this video though. Just getting this purely ready. I'm going to Overland Expo this weekend. Kind of wanted to get this thing on and get it done. And then I will possibly do a future video when I add some more accessories and stuff like that to this roof rack. I'm going to show you some design features that I thought were pretty cool. This backside, I did like a cut and then a round. And then actually, it might be kind of hard to see on video, but these pieces, this tapers to that point and then it kind of drops down and then tapers to the front. Kind of gives it a good sleek look in person. Hard to tell on video, but I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. All right, guys, this is actually after Expo. Uh, I kind of figured you guys didn't really get too great of a look at it when I was doing that video earlier and kind of rushing. So just want to give you guys a good walk around of how the rack turned out. I know the roof's dirty, it sits underneath this tree, but. So plenty of room, uh, you can mount some boxes or anything else. Like I said before, the fan is still able to open completely without hitting the bar. This is the awning all mounted up nice and tight to the edge there. This awning actually works out uh, really well. It's pretty much the exact size of the top right there. So it doesn't look funny sticking out front or rear or anything like that. But yeah, overall, I am extremely happy with it. Here's a little top view. My leaf collection. <laughs> All right, guys, that about sums up the roof rack build. Uh, still gonna add some lights and stuff later on. I'll do some videos about that uh, in the future. And I hope this video is helpful to you and hopefully it helps you design your own roof rack. If you're curious about what app I used on the iPad to design it, it's an app called Shaper 3D. Uh, it is a paid app, you do have to pay for it. And it is a little bit of a learning curve, but once you learn it, it is super awesome. Uh, allows you to create some DXF files and send them to places like Send Cut Send uh, and the Laser Dynamics uh, Incorporated place that I sent my files to. So it's a, a worthy skill to learn and in the future can help you out a lot on any sort of custom build. So once again, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.